Hello everybody. Welcome to the presentation on the poem The Vultures by David Diep. Let's begin with a short introduction to the poem. The poem explores the pertinent issues raised by colonialism. Africa is a land that has been mauled and mutilated by the vicious vultures of colonialism. So uh, vultures here become symbolic of the colonial powers who treated natives with utmost cruelty and contempt. The poem is an angry tirade against the colonial powers and the point outlines the devastating ramifications of colonialism. The poem is marked by a tone of bitterness as the poet narrates the suffering that his motherland had to endure. Now let's move on to a detailed analysis of the poem. The poet begins thus. In that time when civilization struck with insults. The time that the poet refers to is situated in the past. But the scars of that time remain unforgotten in the minds of the Africans. Though the colonial powers prided themselves on their seemingly civilized behavior, the bitter truth hints at a different reality. The poet's use of the word civilization is loaded with irony as the colonizers used their tag of civilization to insult the natives. The dominant colonial narrative was always defined by the values of civilization and culture. The civilized colonizer going out into the world to impart knowledge to the uncouth natives is perhaps the most cliched idea one can find in uh, colonial narratives. However, what remains unsaid is the condescension that marked the colonial enterprise. The colonizers thought that you know the natives were unsophisticated barbarians and uh, they went ahead and insulted and desecrated the colonized cultures, religions and literatures. When holy water struck domesticated brows, the vultures built in the shadow of their clothes, the bloody monument of the tutelary era. When holy water struck domesticated brows. This line refers to the forceful conversion to Christianity. The missionaries came with the colonizers and they were appalled by the native religions. They took it upon themselves to convert the natives and this was often a very violent process. The natives were lured and tempted first, but if these measures failed, then the colonizers had absolutely no moral qualms about using force to you know uh, beat the natives into the fold of Christianity. That is why the poet has used the word struck. That single word is suggestive of all the violence that the colonizers were capable of. And again it is extremely ironic as Christianity is hailed as a religion of peace and love. Though the religion is steeped in the principles of peace and love, the colonizers felt no need to practice these principles on the natives. Now look at the next line. The vultures built in the shadow of their clothes, the bloody monument of the tutelary era. After framing the gruesome time frame, the poet says that it is during such a brutal era that the vultures of colonialism decided to build their bloody monument. This monument is stained by the blood of the hapless natives and yet the colonizers view it as an extension of their glory. During the tutelary era, the Africans were under the tutelage or guardianship of the colonizer. Here again, we see that the image and the reality are incongruous. Tutelage suggests a benevolent guardianship and yet the colonial era is noted for its savage violence. In that time, laughter gasped its last in the metallic hell of roads 
and the monotonous rhythm of paternosters covered the groans on plantations run for profit. In these lines, the poet paints an unsettling picture of the hellish life that the Africans had to endure. The phrase in that time is repeated to suggest that this terrible time has left an indelible mark on the African psyche and that the Africans are not likely to forget it. All their happiness disappeared with the arrival of the colonizers and laughter died a cruel death. They were forced to work in the colonial enterprises and joy slowly receded from their lives. Paternoster refers to the prayer Our Father and symbolizes the zealous brand of Christianity advocated by the colonial missionaries. The natives find the rhythm of this new religion dull and monotonous as they sorely miss the vitality of the religions of their ancestors. Religion is an essential part of one's culture and identity and the poet is here highlighting the evils of forcible conversion. The natives were forced to work on the plantations run by the colonizers and the working conditions were terrible. However, their groans of agony and pleas for mercy went unheard as they were covered by the sounds of the Christian prayer. Dieppe is here critiquing the ways in which the colonizers sanctified their use of violence under the guise of religion. O oh, sour memory of extorted kisses, promises mutilated by machine gun blasts, strange men who were not men. Dieppe now turns his attention to the sexual abuse faced by the African women at the hands of the colonial masters. The memory of such kisses is termed as sour as these kisses are forced out of the women. The kisses are extorted from the women under the threat of violence or retaliation. So their bodies become alien to them as the colonizers take control. Like their motherland, the women of Africa also lose agency or power as their bodies are appropriated by the colonizers. The colonial masters promised them money, power and glory, but these promises turned out to be false. When the natives questioned the violation of these promises, they were threatened with the violence of the machine guns. The colonizers are indeed strange men who are not really men. They are strange as they do not behave like the natives. And their violence and cruelty lead the poet to wonder if they are really men or something more sinister. You knew all the books you did not know love, all the hands that fertilize the womb of the earth. The colonial masters who prided themselves on their knowledge know nothing about the concept of love. Though they pride themselves on their culture and refinement, they are sorely lacking in humanity and kindness. They do not understand love and are casually different to the suffering of the Africans who suffer at their hands. The natives are bound to the soul and they understand how their earth works. The colonizers are bereft of such wisdom and therefore go on torturing the Africans and exploiting their continent or land. The roots of our hands deep as revolt, despite your hymns of pride among boneyards, villages laid waste and Africa dismembered. The poet suggests that though the natives have suffered terribly, their hands or existence go deep as the roots of trees. They will endure and one day they will revolt against tyranny. The colonizers turned Africa into a boneyard and sang hymns of pride at the handiwork of cruelty and torture. 
entire villages have been razed to the ground and the motherland cut into pieces by the greedy colonizers who divided her amongst themselves. Despite all this, Africa will endure and one day the roots of revolt will emerge from layers of slavery and denigration. Hope lived in us like a citadel and from the mines of Swaziland to the heavy sweat of Europe's factories, spring will put on flesh under our steps of light. Dieppe is confident of Africa's rejuvenation. In spite of all the suffering they had to undergo, the natives will fight back as they carried within them the flame of hope. They shielded the spirit of hope like a well-guarded citadel or fortress as they are sure that one day they will vanquish the colonizers. Their labor is exploited to man the mines of Swaziland and the factories of Europe. And you have to remember that all colonial enterprises thrived on slave labor. Yet there is hope. And the poet says, spring will put on flesh under our steps of light. Spring is a season of renewal and the children of Africa will emerge free from the clutches of the colonial vultures. The natives' flesh or labor has been consumed by the colonial vultures, but it will grow again. Their steps will carry them to a future that doesn't bear the shadow of these carrion eaters. Vultures are birds of prey that are merciless to its victims and the colonizers are here depicted as vultures who feed on the spirit of Africa. But the vultures of colonialism will be driven away. The poet believes that Africa will emerge victorious and that a new future full of hope and possibilities await them. The poem thus closes with a note of hope and the promise of a new beginning. So that's all for now. Hope all of you understood. Thank you.